hello everyone in this lecture we will discuss the example problem on program evolution and review technique that is the pert method let's see the example problem here given the various activities with its optimistic type most likely type and pessimistic type then we have to determine the draw a project network diagram and find the probability of the project completion in 40 days let's see the solution first step is the draw the project network here first activity is 1 2 2 let's draw it activity 1 2 2 then draw the activity 1 2 6 next to draw the activities 2 2 3 and 2 2 4 2 2 3 and 2 2 4 next to activity is 3 2 5 and also 4 2 5 then you have to draw the activity 3 2 5 and also have to draw the activity 4 2 5 next you have to draw the activity 6 2 7 next you have to draw the activity 5 2 8 and finally, we have to draw the activity 7 to 8. Second step is compute the expected duration of each activity using the formula TE equal to T0 plus 4TM plus TP divided by 6. Also calculate the expected variance that is sigma square equal to TP minus T0 divided by 6 whole square for the each activity here you have to determine the te and the sigma square for the activities you have to remember you have to determine the te and sigma square for the activities so for this one i have to draw the tabular column and determine the te and sigma square for all the activities for activity 1 to 2 t naught is the 1 and the tm is the 7 and the tp is the 30 then the te will become the 1 plus 4 into 7 plus 30 divided by 6 it will become the value is te value is the 7 so similarly have to find the all the activities that is the per activity 1 to 6 te value will become the 6 and activity 2 to 3 it will become the 14 and activity 2 to 4 it will come the 5 3 to 5 te value is the 11 and activity 4 to 5 te value is the 7 and activity 6 to 7 te value is the 11 and activity 5 to 8 te value is the 4 and finally activity 7 to 8 te value is the 18 next we have to find the sigma square for the all the activities here sigma square equal to tp minus t naught divided by 6 whole square first we have to see the activity 1 2 2 so tp is the 13 and t naught is the 1 so 13 minus 1 12 12 divided by 6 it will come the 2 2 square it will come the 4 similarly we have to find the sigma square for the all the activities that is 1 2 6 4 2 2 3 16 2 2 4 1 3 2 5 4 4 2 5 4 6 2 7 16 5 2 8 1 and finally 7 2 8 is the 16. So next third step is the compute the earliest start time, earliest finish time and latest time latest start time latest finish time and total float of each activity to calculate the earliest start time and earliest finish time we have to follow the forward pass computation technique for this forward pass computation technique we have to begin at the start event that is the event one and we have to move towards to the end event that is the 8 and also start event we have to consider the earliest start time is 0 
so at the event one earliest start time is the zero next we have to determine the earliest finished time for activity 1 2 2 then finished time at the event 2 is the so earliest start time plus activity time that is the 0 plus 7 it will become the 7 next at the event 3 so that is the total finished time earliest finished time will become the 7 plus 14 that is the 21 similarly at event 4 Earliest, earliest finish time will become the 7 plus 5 that is the 12 and at act and event 5 earliest finish time will become the 21 plus 11 it will become the 32 similarly 12 plus 7 it will become the 19 among the 32 and 19 we have to consider the maximum value that is 32 why because we so event 5 is the merge event for the activities 3 to 5 and the 4 to 5. Here we have to consider the maximum finish time for the activity 3 to 5 that is the 32. And next we have to determine the earliest finish time at the event 6 that is the 0 plus 6 it is the 6. Next we have to determine the finish time at the event 7 that is the 6 plus 11 equal to the 17. Next, we have to determine the earliest finishing time at the event 8. Event 8 is the merge event for the activity 5 to 8 and the 7 to 8. So, finishing time for the 5 to 8 will become the 32 plus 4, 36. And activity 7 to 8, finishing time at the 8 is the 17 plus 18, it is the 35. Among the 36 and 35, I have to consider the maximum time that is the 36 next we have to determine the latest start time and latest finishing time by backward pass method in the backward backward pass method we have to start at the end event that is the event 8 and have to move towards to the start event that is the event 1 moreover here we have to consider the earliest time equal to the latest time here earliest finishing time equal to the earliest sorry earliest finishing time equal to the latest finishing time so at the event 8 latest finishing time will become the 36 so next we have to move towards to the first event so then have to determine the latest start time at the event 7 that is the 36 minus 18 it will become 18 Next to event 6, it is the 18 minus 11, it will become 7. Next at event 5, 36 minus 4, that is the 32. Next at event 4, that is the 32 minus 7, it will become 25. Next at event 3, 32 minus 11, 21. Next at event 2, 21 minus 14, it will become the 7. Similarly, 25 minus 5, it will become the 20, it will come. So, 2 is the worst event for the activities 2 to 3 and the 2 to 4. So, here we have to consider the minimum start time for the activities 2 to 3 and the 2 to 4. So, minimum time is the 7. So, we have to consider the start time at the event 2 is the 7. And similarly, we have to determine the latest finishing time at the event 1. So it will come the, so 1 is the worst event for the 1 to 2 activities and 1 to 6. Here I have to consider the minimum value. So for the activity 1 to 2, here it will come the 7 minus 7, 0 it will become. And activity 1 to 6, it will come the 7 minus 6, it will come 1. Among the 0 and 1, minimum value is the 0. Then we have to consider the 0 as the latest start time at the event 1. Next we have to determine the total float for the each activity. We know that when the total float equal to the latest start time minus earliest start time. At present here we will determine the total float at the every event. So let's see the at event 1. So latest start time is the 0 and the Earliest start time also 0. So 0 minus 0 here it will become the 0. 
Next, we have to look at the event two. That is the seven minus seven zero. Next, at event three, twenty one minus twenty one, it's a zero. Next, at event four, twenty five minus twelve, it is a thirteen. Next, at event five, thirty two minus thirty two, it is a zero. Next, at event six, seven minus six equal to the one. Next, at event seven, eighteen minus seven equal to the one. Next. At event eight, thirty-six minus thirty-six, it is the zero. So next to fourth step is the find the critical path and identify the critical activities. So critical activity is the if the total float for any activity is zero, then such activity is called as the critical activity. So here critical activities are the one, two, two. So here. Total float at event one also zero, event two also zero. Similarly, next critical activity is the two to three activity. That is the at event two also total float zero, at event three also total float is zero. Next one is the three to five. Also, it is the critical activity. So at event three also zero, at event five also total float is zero. Next is the activity five to eight. Also, it is the critical activity. So here, at event five also total float is zero. At event eight also total float is zero. Next, we have to identify the critical path. Critical path is the sequence of critical activities in a network. Here, critical activities are the one two two, and the two two three, and three two five, and five two eight. So these are the critical activities and the critical path. The sequence of these critical activities is the critical path. That is the one, two, three, five, eight. So this is the path one, two, three, and five, eight. This path we are calling as the critical path. Now expected project duration will become the so duration in the critical activity one, two, two. That is the seven. Plus two to three, that is the fourteen. Fourteen plus and three to five, that is the then it's eleven plus and five to eight. Five to eight is the expected time. That is the four. It is also four. Now expected project duration is the seven plus fourteen plus eleven plus four. That is the thirty-six days. So next step is the compute the project length variance sigma square, which is the sum of the variance of all the critical activities, and hence find the standard deviation of the project length. Here we are determine the variance, that is the variance of the all the critical activities. So here we have to find the Sum of the sigma square for the all the critical activities. Here, critical activity is the one two two. For activity one two two, sigma is the four. Similarly, next to two two three, it is the sixteen. And three two five, so this is the four. And five two eight sigma square is the one. So it is the sum of the variance of all the critical activities. So here I have to do the summation of the critical activity sigma square of the critical activity that is the four plus sixteen plus four plus one. So the sigma square will become the twenty five. Then sigma equal to the five. So next step is the calculate the standard normal variable that is the d equal to T S minus T E divided by sigma. Here T S is the Scheduled time to complete the project. It is given in the data that is the 40 days. T E is the normal expected project length duration. That is where determined. That is the 36 days. And sigma is the expected deviation of the project length. That is also we determined. Determined that is the sigma equal to five. Then I have to substitute here T S value, T E value, and sigma value. Then D will become the point eight. Next, we determine the probability that the 
project will completed in 40 days it is given by probability of z is less than or equal to the d here d is the point eight then we have to see the area under the normal curve for the reason of z is less than or equal to point eight for this one i have to see the standard normal distribution table so in this table it is given the so z is probability of the z is less than or equal to 0.8 value is the 0 0.78814 so then probability of z less than or equal to 0.8 is the 0 0.7881 in the terms of the percentage we can be written as a 78.81 so then I have to give the conclusion. So if the project is, the probability of the project will be completed in 40 days is the 78.81%. Then write written as a conclusion, if the project is performed 100 times under the same condition, there will be 78.81 occasions for the job to be completed in 40 days. So this is the solution. Thank you.